ka, magkapi tayo. Jerry. Our text for today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 17 to 19. It says, Jesus said to the crowds, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill it. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth will pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Thus far is the reading for today's Gospel Reflection. Great in the kingdom of God, what is it for us? In the Gospel passage today, this might be held as the most astonishing statement that Jesus made in the whole Sermon of the Mount. In this statement, Jesus lays down the basic character of the law. To Jesus, the law is so sacred that even the smallest details of it should be fulfilled. Yet, again and again, from the perspective of the Jews, Jesus broke what the Jews called the law. He did not observe the hand washing that the law provided. He healed the sick people on a Sabbath, which is not allowed. In fact, he was condemned and crucified as a law breaker. And yet, he seems to speak of the law with respect and great reverence. The Jews understand the law in four different ways. Number one, they used it to mean the Ten Commandments. Number two, they used it to mean the first five books of the Bible, known as the Pentateuch, which is the most important part of the Bible. Number three, they use the phrase, the law and the prophets, to mean the whole scripture, the whole Old Testament, or the whole Hebrew Bible. And number four, they use it to mean the oral or the scribal law. In the time of Jesus, it was this last meaning which was the most common understanding. It was, in fact, this scribal law which both Jesus and the Apostle Paul utterly condemned. The scribes made it their business to reduce or to multiply the great principles of the law. Like, for example, the Ten Commandments, it is multiplied to thousands upon thousands of rules and regulations. So, all kinds of things were classified as work or considered as work. The scribes were the men who work out these rules and multiply them into bits 
and pieces of loss. Our challenge. What then did Jesus mean by the law? He said that he had not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. That is to say, he came really to bring out the real meaning of the law. Even behind the scribal and the oral law, there was one great principle which the scribes and the Pharisees had misunderstood, that in all things, we must seek God's will, yes. When we come to know it, we must dedicate our life to following it. The scribes and the Pharisees were right in seeking God's will and dedicating their lives to following it. But, underline this, but they were mistaken in finding that will in their man-made rules and regulations. At dito, nagsisimula ang lahat ng mga misinterpretations between how Jesus interprets the law and how the Jewish authority interprets the law. Jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophets. Take note of that. Jesus came to show us what it means to give glory to God and the respect due to every individual person. They did not consist in following the multitude rules and regulations. They did not consist in following the multiple rules and regulations. They did not consist in sacrifice, but in mercy, not in legalism, but in love. Not in prohibitions not to do things, but in the spirit that binds them together in the commandment of love. When Jesus spoke about the law and the gospel, he was laying down certain principles. Number one, he was saying that there is a continuation between the past and the present. We must never look on life as a kind of a battle between past and the present. The present grows out with the past. That's the reality. Number two, in this passage, Jesus definitely warns us not to think of our life as his disciples having an easy life. Meaning, our life as his followers must exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. The Jews aim to satisfy the law by literally following them. But to us, our aim is to observe and follow God's law with love and gratitude. There is no limit to following God's love. God's law is true and righteous because it flows from His love and holiness. That is why God commands us to love Him above all things and to follow Him in His love. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, rule and govern our hearts minds and bodies so that all our thoughts our words and actions may be in accordance with your law and wisdom and thus may we be saved and protected through your mighty help we ask this in the name of jesus our lord amen okay so panto makapatid don't forget to finish your coffee thank you so much magandang buhay sa ating lahat may god Bless us all. See you next time.